And if you look at the traditional diets of more than 2,000 Okinawans, this is how it breaks down. Only 1% of their diet was fish. Less than 1% of their diet was meat, and same with eggs and dairy. So it was more than 96% plant-based, and more than 90% whole food plant-based, very few processed foods either. And not just whole food plant-based, but most of their diet was vegetables, and one vegetable in particular, sweet potatoes. The Okinawan diet was centered around purple and orange sweet potatoes. How delicious is that? Could have been bitter gourd or soursop, but no, sweet potatoes. All right, guys, so as you just saw, um, it is the sweet potato that is the best potato, and the perfect potato. And the reason being is that, as you just saw, it, it, was, a, it was a staple in the Okinawan diet, which is one of the blue zones. And, um, and as far as personal anecdotes, I, I can share that. You can look at the bottom of this video, and you can see some studies in sweet potatoes and their benefits. But these anecdotes, these personal anecdotes, may later be confirmed with science or not, because they are personal to me, and this is my experience with sweet potatoes. Number one, every time I would uh, do a triathlon or some sort of bike ride or even a workout, it's always the day before or a few days when I have sweet potatoes, my performance would be just through the roof. Like, it was just my stamina and everything was just uh, on, on another level. As far as bodybuilding, it's been, sweet potatoes are a staple food. They've been around for a long time. It's been known in bodybuilding circles and in the community that sweet potatoes are like the ideal carbohydrate source, and there's good reason for that. Now, were they doing laboratory experiments on sweet potatoes? Of course not. But what they did do was they, tr they had trial and error, and they probably relayed this information amongst each other, and they figured out that the sweet potato, for some reason, was an ideal carbohydrate source that didn't create spillover or uh, also called smoothing out or getting waterlogged, which a lot of carbs can do since for every gram of carbohydrate it comes through three grams of water. And there's no other carbohydrate source that I've used that would give me that fullness with, with, with being shredded and dry like sweet potatoes. In fact, if you look at this video, this is, this is proof of that. This happened in 2014. It was the... Uh, for the 2004, it was the NJ Central Pro Physique Show. I placed third in that Pro Physique Show. And here is a snapshot of my pump uh, right before stepping on stage. The night before, I had two sweet potatoes uh, with a little bit of nut butter and a little bit of plant protein on top. And the pump was unbelievable. The fullness and dryness I had was just, it was epic. So check it out. I mean, it's pretty clear. I mean, it was just like an unbelievable pump and just the optimal extracellular water balance, the optimal glycogen uh, storage. The muscles were, were topped off with glycogen, and there was no real spillover. Um, now, of course, part of that is being lean enough. You have to be lean enough at first for that to happen. But number two, you have to kind of um, hit the um, – you have to hit a lot of things. But it all came together for that show. As far as triathlon performance, uh, there was actually a triathlon called the Yam City Triathlon, and uh, check out this video of me kind of uh, kind of show, showing off the shirt because it was like perfect for me and Evan's group try bodybuilding, which is kind of like an oxymoron, but it's not really an oxymoron. It's basically true. It works, and it's probably the most effective way to burn fat, really for everyday people and re even athletes. So check out the video. We have a group on Facebook called Try Bodybuilding, so check us out. And here's that video of that triathlon with a few pictures from that race. So what's your thoughts on that tri body building, bro? Well, this is uh, this is what it's about, bro. The you know, once the bodybuilding shows end, then we just focus on the awesome triathlons, man. I love them. They're they're great. I love the shirt too, man. Definitely a tri bodybuilder shirt, man. This is a a tri bodybuilder. Uh, it's a triathlon, and it's got a bodybuilder staple food, yams, man. You know what I mean? So, 
Let y'all get a good look at that shirt right quick. See that? Man, that's the nicest shirt I've ever seen. <laughs> I like, I'll I'll tell like you. the yams on the bike and the yams running and swimming, bro. Probably eat some yams tonight, too. Carve it off for the uh, triathlon. Signing off. Going to eat. Alright, so a few facts of sweet potatoes that you may have not have been aware of. Number one, sweet potatoes contain compounds called phyto uh, key, key latins. I think that's how you pronounce it. Basically, it's, uh, it's a compound that, that binds heavy metals like cadmium, copper, mercury, and lead, and thus they help to toxify the body. Sweet potatoes, as many of you do know, they're rich in beta carotene, but they're also rich in alpha carotene, which is a carotenoid that has been associated with um, improved uh, longevity, uh, and, and that study is down below. As far as sweet potato protein, it is not high in protein, but some studies have found that it actually has a decent to a high biological score. One study cited that the biological value of sweet potato protein was 90 to 100. Um, so I thought that was, that was astonishing. All right, those pictures of eight-time Olympian Lee Haney um, are for a reason. I met, I had the privilege of meeting Mr. Haney in 2010 at a bodybuilding show in Mississippi. He was doing a um, seminar there. And one of the things that stood out was he was talking about he was going to come out with a, a new product, a uh, protein supplement. And he was going to incorporate sweet potato protein in that product. And he was big on, he was a big proponent of sweet potatoes. Now. This is an anecdote, but here's the thing. He's an eight-time Olympian, so he's going to have some credence to what he says. He's got a, a, a wealth of wisdom and, um, and, and also experience. And so here's his product, and here's proof of me um, kind of verifying what I just said I'm about sorry, meeting. Sorry, guys, uh, the battery ran out. But basically, this is verifying what I said about meeting him. So the final three topics are going to be short and sweet. First off, let's address the glycemic index of sweet potatoes. Um, it tends to be in the moderate range. Now, I've looked at the research, and I'm still looking at it. Um, there will probably be more studies to come out on this. But basically, the preparation influences the sweet potato, as well as the variety of sweet potato, where it was harvested. There's a lot of factors involved. But one of the studies that I read showed that uh, consuming sweet potatoes raw or uh, dehydrated was the lowest glycemic index. Now boiling was shown to be the lowest glycemic index, not lower than raw or dehydrated, but it was lower compared to baking and frying and steaming, which were the highest, um, to my surprise, but it kind of makes sense. Now, um, another study showed that boiling actually produced the high, highest and baking was more of a lower moderate. So the, the studies are mixed, those factors is involved into why, it's fit, why they're mixed, and it's also um, a complicated matter. Uh, it has to do with just, it, it's a lot of factors involved. Now, um, the one thing I like is Dr. Greger was looking at this and it was like, what's the best way to eat sweet potatoes? Well, the best way to eat them is whatever gets you to eat them. Um, that's the truth, um, not frying or anything, but you know, if you bake them, which is what I actually like, I like to bake them and just stuff them with a little nut butter. Um, that's my preference. Um, now, I do eat them raw. You can actually juice them, you can make sweet potato, you can boil them um, and make mashed sweet potatoes, but I personally like to bake them, I just think they're better that way. And um, I've actually juiced them recently, which is really, actually tasted really good. Uh, I may make a video on that, but um, juicing them is phenomenal. Check out, take a look at some of these glucose curves with, uh, with the sweet potatoes. I mean, it's, it, it, there's differences, and the, the base comparison is a glucose drink, which is the highest, but you'll see they looked at the flesh and the skin of a sweet potato and different methods of cooking, so check these out.
Um, and one thing I haven't talked about is uh, maybe I have, but purple sweet potatoes are super healthy. They're super good. So, um, and, and they tend to be low in calories. Like one sweet potato is like 100 to 120 calories. So, um, you know, even with a higher glycemic index, if it was baked or whatnot, uh, which again is still kind of mixed, I, I tend to believe they're more moderate. Um, but the glycemic load wouldn't be as high if you just have one or two sweet potatoes anyway. Plus the benefits you get of the beta carotene, the alpha carotene, the uh, phyto uh, chelatins that bind the heavy metals and the, the biologically high value of protein is just in the fiber. And the fact that I find that a lot of the sweet potato makes its way into the muscle and it doesn't, doesn't uh, it, it's probably the best, one of the best muscle glycogen restorating foods out there in my opinion it's just it's phenomenal you know some carbs people fear it kind of hinders fat loss it smooths them out and makes them retain water and stuff i find sweet potatoes don't do that they actually fill up my muscles and they keep my water levels optimal um, as if i haven't even been consuming carbs which is just remarkable and that's probably reason reason why it's a staple in, in many uh bodybuilding diets as far as a carbohydrate choice even in carbohydrate restricted diets and it's a great great uh, source of uh, carbohydrates and fuel for performance whether it be whatever sport you uh, whatever sport you do fact about sweet potatoes I find it's really phenomenal is their satiety is there's a, there's a they are the one of the most satiating foods out there and I think part of it is because that they're dense in carbohydrates but they're good carbohydrates and I mean good meaning probably it's one of the better uh, starch based carbohydrates out there uh, technically, it's a vegetable. It's a root vegetable, which makes it even more remarkable. But I find that it fills you up. It, it fills you up because of the fiber, probably, as well as the antioxidant capacity, as well as the fact that it's high in carbohydrates, which means it's going to bind more water. So if you were to have a sweet potato or two, and you follow that up with like a glass or two of water, it's going to satiate you just phenomenally. So I think in that regard, they're really fascinating. Uh, and so check out these uh, graphs as well on the satiety index of, of uh, sweet potatoes. And lastly, I'm going to let Dr. Greger finish it off for us here. Um, there was one study that found some anti-cancer benefits of um, sweet potato proteins, one in particular. And I just, uh, so the study's down below at the bottom of this video. Check out Dr. Greger. He'll finish, he'll go ahead and end this video. And as always, I thank you for watching. Feel free to leave comments and questions below. And hopefully you learned something new today. So tune in next time. They're not just packed with nutrition, but may have special cancer-fighting properties. In 1931, a unique protein was discovered in sweet potatoes, later renamed. 80% of the protein in sweet potatoes is a type of protease inhibitor with potential anti-cancer effects. It was originally tested against leukemia cells and appears to suppress the growth of leukemia cells in a petri dish, but how would a sweet potato protein ever get into our bloodstream? As soon as most proteins hit our stomach, they start getting digested. So they tried sweet potato protein against tongue cancer. Sweet potato constituents certainly come in contact with our mouth. Tongue cancer is often treated with chemo. However, most of the chemo drugs for tongue cancer have great aversive side effects, so it is indispensable for us to find other therapeutic strategies. Sweet potato protein rapidly diminished viability of the cancer within a matter of days, leading them to propose that you know, sweet potato may be useful for human tongue cancer, but presumably not much else. Remarkably, though, this class of proteins doesn't just survive digestion, but may be absorbed into the bloodstream intact in at least two of the nine women with advanced cervical cancer they tried giving it to. So, most recently, it was tried on colorectal cancer cells, one of our uh, most common and deadly cancers. Normally, we just surgically remove the colon, but that only works in the early stages, since there are often micrometastases outside the colon that can subsequently lead to cancer recurrence and death. And so we've started searching for anti-metastatic agents. And not only does sweet potato protein slow down the growth of colon cancer cells, but decreases cancer cell migration and invasion. Though sweet potato consumption has been associated with lower gallbladder cancer rates, it's never been directly put to the test. But what's the downside? 